Folks, there is opening day baseball this week, and that means previews and predictions for the 2024 MLB season. You are Locked On Pirates, your daily Pittsburgh Pirates podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome back, everybody, to the Locked On Pirates podcast here on the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team, your Pittsburgh Pirates every day. My name is Ethan Smith, your wonderful host of this show every Monday through Friday for the next seven months of regular season baseball. This is the last Monday show that we will do for about seven months where we do not have regular season baseball on your feet. And uh, by the way, I have to do it. I have the real gary morgan on the show today the the real one <laughs> the real gary morgan is here he is ready to go gary we're three days away from baseball i, I think everybody's ready to go at this point and right before we started recording the show is when we found out a lot of questions about the opening day roster i'm sure everybody on all their shows will touch that later this week but it's exciting. i'm sure they all will and um i would like to just thank the stooge that created a fake account of, of me because I, I got 100 extra followers out of it out of nowhere. So betting that's not what you wanted to accomplish. But thanks. Yeah, it's nice. I mean, hey, uh, it's not all that difficult. Uh, I think most of us who follow Gary on Twitter know his um, his typical tweets that he has rather than other things that cannot be said on this platform. Um, but uh, it, either way, it, it, we're doing a preview and prediction show today. I have three of these coming your way. Uh, we're going to do this one today. We're going to have one on the Pittsburgh Pirates. and I was going to predict the opening day roster, but no need to do that anymore. Uh, so we'll be looking at the opening day roster as, uh, as well as predictions for that. And then, of course, Wednesday, we will have like a full on like what I think the Pirates will do and all that other stuff. So, yeah, you're going to see that these are going to kind of lead over to each other and all that other stuff. I will be saying my Pirates record prediction on this show today, and I'm, I cannot wait for the comments for it. Um, but let's start, I think, when you're talking about Major League Baseball and predictions as far as, a, like, we're a pirate show, but we're talking about the entire scope of the league today. I think it's fun to start with the stat leaders in each league. And I really think that this year, when you're looking at the stat leaders in each league, so I'm probably going to do home runs, strikeouts, stolen bases, batting average, OPS, stuff like that. And when you start with the home run ball, I think there's a lot of candidates in the National League this year, Gary, that can really lead in this category. And um, Prize Picks, one of our other wonderful sponsors on this show, is a very nice uh, little over-under um, for the season totals on a lot of these things. And I believe the leader on it was, I want in the National League, was Acuna, or is Matt Olson at 42 and a half. I really think that Olsen could probably do it again, but there are so many candidates for that, for a home run spot. So who do you think could lead in home runs in the National League this year? I mean, Pete Alonzo, if he's healthy, is always a good candidate. Um, Shoei Otani, first time in the National League. Um, I don't know if that's going to take him any time to adjust to the different pitchers, maybe. But... Uh, I mean, he's always a candidate to go off. Acuna, you know, hit 40 last year, so it's not like he was that much behind Olsen. Um, Olsen, that was just an otherworldly season for yeah. him. Um, so I don't know if I would bet on it, but he certainly is capable. You know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. O'Neill Cruz is a guy that could pop up and hit 35, 40 home runs. So he's probably in that conversation as well. Yeah, and I think it's fun to say that I don't know if there's any particular guy that's going to lead in anything for the Pittsburgh Pirates as far as statistics go. Now, if we're going to defensive run saved, yeah, you have a clear candidate in defensive run saved and key Brian Hayes, but you know, some people just think that stat's a fake stat. Some people think that, oh, it doesn't matter. Uh, well, it does to me because key Brian Hayes is the best defensive third baseman in baseball, and I will not be told otherwise. Um, you look at strikeouts too. So like looking on the hitting side – you have the homers. You're going to have the guys like Acuna. You're going to have Olsen. You're going to have Otani. Uh, you look at the OPS number. Usually that's going to 
translate over to who leads in home runs because it's going to translate over to who leads in slugging. When you get to pitching, man, I did not think, and this is just from being down in Georgia um, and just hearing more about it than I probably should. Spencer Strider is already an elite pitcher, already crazy. <laughs> and he adds a new pitch this spring in a changeup that a lot of people didn't expect him to add. And it's like, okay, well, he was already pretty unstoppable last season, unless he played the Pirates, of course. Um, and now you're adding another pitch to his arsenal. It, it's really hard for me not to say that he's going to lead the National League in strikeouts. I mean, he had, I mean, he almost has to. I, I mean, there's obviously other candidates too, but you see some pretty good pitchers leave the National League as well this year, and Corbin Burns being one of the big ones that leaves the National League. Um, but you also saw the introduction of a lot of pretty strong pitchers to the uh, National League as well. I mean, Mitch Keller had almost 200 last year, so you know it's not as though he he isn't in that um, conversation. It, it, the thing is with with the strikeout number, it has so much to do with health and mm -hmm. and really success. I mean, how how many games do you get to start? How many innings do you go? How many people do you face? You know, how nasty is your stuff? Does it stay nasty the whole time, or is it only nasty at the beginning and then you kind of get through with contact the rest of the way? That's why pitchers like Spencer Strider are so clutch. I mean, yeah. like, you, you, he has a lot of swing and miss. So does Keller when he's on. But, I mean, I would go with Strider if I had to pick one, if only because he's done it a couple years now in a row. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if he's healthy, there's no reason to expect it's not him again. Yeah, and then you move over to the American League. A little bit different, especially being a Pirates-centric show and Pirates-centric guys who talk about the Pirates. You know, the American League, we're, we know baseball, but like it's always been the old adage that if your team is in one or the other, you know more about the other. And that's just basically, for the longest time, I mean, you really didn't even have interleague play in baseball. So you really didn't even have to worry about the other league until you got to the World Series. When you look at the American League, uh, it's a very interesting league to me compared to the National League, and we'll get into this later when we do like our playoff team predictions and stuff, because there are a lot of top-heavy teams, and then it's just a drop-off. So when you look at statistical stuff, I mean, you look at the people that are going to lead in those statistical categories, you look at stolen bases. I'll, I'll mention that right away. Estuary Ruiz is going to lead in that category again. The kid is ridiculous. He does have people that can fight him for it, like Bobby Witt and maybe even a Julio Rodriguez if they both stay healthy as well. Um, but moving all the way through that, I think Shohei leaving the American League makes some of these stat leader things a little interesting because you obviously look at the guys that are going to like contend for like AL MVP, Jordan Alvarez, Aaron Judge, Juan Soto kind of jumps out to me there as well. So hitting-wise, I mean, who do you think is going to be up there for the most part in the American league that I may not have mentioned in some of these core stats. I just have a feeling that Juan Soto is going to put on a show this year. It's a contract year for him. Um, Yankee stadium, with that short porch and, and right field. I, I just feel like he's going to just do damage pretty much all year. I actually think he's going to outshine Aaron judge and everybody else on that team. Um, to me, he's he's the most poised to just go off. I think it was a perfect place for him, perfect situation for him. I, I, I really think it's going to make magic this year. Yeah, and, and I'm looking at a guy like Jordan Alvarez, too, where we're seeing the Astros obviously last year be supplemented by the uh, Texas Rangers. But Jordan Alvarez, when he's healthy and he's on, that guy is on. And yeah. I think it's also we're kind of seeing that shift now where you had uh, Jose Altuve is kind of like that unproven or the unquestioned leader of that team. And I feel like Jordan's kind of moving into that mold now where it's like, OK, now this is starting to become Jordan Alvarez's Astros team. It's like Jordan, Kyle Tucker, that whole team as well. And getting it away from the stats here in a minute before we come back. We're going to talk about FanDuel, which is where you can bet on a lot of this stuff that me and Gary are talking about, like home run totals, who you think is going to make the playoffs, which is who we're going to talk about in just a second. And my playoff teams might surprise you. I don't know Gary's. Gary's might know mine already, and you guys might have a lot of fun with these in the comments later. But before we talk about them, let's talk about FanDuel. 
We're mentioning a bunch of stuff about predictions on today's show. And if you want to bet on some of these things and make a little bit of money, make sure you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. And right now, a lot of you probably have busted brackets because of a multitude of different reasons. But FanDuel lets you bet on every single game of the March Madness Tournament, whether you're betting on a big upset or a number one seed. It's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book because right now, New customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets and be ready for baseball as well because FanDuel is an official sponsor the Locked On Podcast Network. And also don't forget that – Locked On Sports Today is here for you. It's a free 24-7 streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So I'm going to be talking about mine more at length probably tomorrow or Wednesday. So I will let Gary have his platform here. Six teams in each division, of course, make the playoffs. Three division winners, three wild cards. I've said from the beginning, I think it's a perfect number. I really do. Uh, I've heard some people say they think they should expand it to seven and do it kind of like the NFL does where one team gets the bye. I just I don't think that they need that many teams in the postseason for baseball. I just I just don't. And then you're also talking about the World Series at that point, probably dipping further into November. Don't think that's needed. So you get six teams in each division or each uh, league, obviously. Start with the American League, Gary. Who are your American League playoff teams as of today? Well, really, as of today with three days left to change anything. American League is so tough because it's so AL East focused. It really is. Yeah. Um, Baltimore should be in there uh i think they're the division winner if if all things kind of stay equal uh, meaning they don't suffer a lot of catastrophic injury i think they should probably be the first team there um the yankees i think should probably be in it i don't know how you count out the rays they always seem to find a way but man it just looking at their roster and just every, Second half of the year could be super strong for them. They have a ton of pitchers coming back from Tommy John. Mm -hmm. And so they could look like a completely different team post all-star break than they do before. So I I can't a hundred percent count them out, but I'll say the Yankees and Orioles to start with central. That's such a toss up. I guess I'd go Royals right now. You know, the Royals are probably the best set right now. And, uh, then the the West, ugh, it's kind of a ghost land. I I guess I would go with uh, Texas again, but Houston probably would be right there for a wild card. So that would probably be my teams right there for the that's American five League. Of them. Yeah, that's five of them, and then your extra, I would think, comes from the AL East. So it's either Tampa or Toronto, but Toronto doesn't look great to me right now. Yeah, and that's what's very interesting about the American League is when I was looking at it, I think you can pretty easily pencil in four teams. I think you can definitely say Baltimore, the Yankees, the Astros, and the Rangers are all going to be there. Then it's the question of, okay, who does win the AL Central? Who, What, what team doesn't maybe have as many injuries as you'd like, like as you would hope you'd have? Or what's one of those teams makes that like, move at the deadline that pushes them over a little bit you said the royals and i think the royals are going to be there i think cole reagan's is going to be a guy that is going to shine for a lot of people i don't think people realize that the second half of the year that he had was very mitch keller-esque level like he was pitching a very very good season last year for the royals it was just a team that nobody really paid attention to i just really think that the twins are going to just luck their way out of that division. I know it sounds really weird, but I mean, if you're assuming that Buxton can stay healthy, which is a hard assumption to make at times, but he also, I think finally has the guy that's going to break out this year. That's going to be a great running mate for him and Royce Lewis. I really think Royce Lewis has the potential to be a phenomenal baseball player. He already showed some of that last year. 
So I think Minnesota would be my pick for that, but I do think Kansas City would be that close second team. Um, I wanted to almost say Cleveland, but Cleveland, I don't think they really know what they're doing. I mean, they just only brought back Austin Hedges and Carlos Carrasco pretty much for the offseason. So we we pretty much agree on most of it. That sixth spot, I had Toronto penciled in there because I really think Vladimir Guerrero Jr. dropping some weight a little bit is going to help him a lot. You still have uh, Bichette in there as well. I agree with your statement, though, on the Rays. I mean, the Rays are going to be – if they even just tread water until they get back a lot of those guys, that's just going to be insane. And then, of course, you have – Junior Caminario coming down the pipe eventually and all of these other guys that could potentially make splashes. And it's a model that everybody tries to replicate. But if I had to say it today, I would probably say Baltimore wins the AL East, Twins win the Central, Rangers win the West, y- Yankees and Houston fight for the top wild card spot, which in turn would just mean who gets the home field in that, which I think that would be a phenomenal wild card series, by the way, Gary. Yankees, Astros in a three game set. I think that'd be very fun. And then I would say probably Toronto gets that last spot. Yeah, I mean, it's a toss up for the last spot. I don't think the AL has nearly as many strong teams as the NL. And uh, we make a lot of jokes about the NL Central, but the AL Central is way worse. Oh, by a pretty large margin, I would actually say. It's, it's a The AL Central is a division that's going to be we joke about it here saying that the division could be one in the NL Central for 85 wins. I could see a world where 82 wins the AL Central if things get really crazy. As far as the National League goes, um, I'll let you go first because mine is going to – and this is where I'm going to like time stamp it whenever I say it because then I'm, I'm just going to get shunned for it the first day that the – First day that a specific team loses, I'm going to get shunned for it. So I'll let you go first on this one for the National League. Um. I think the Giants are going to win the NL West. I think they, they're going to outpitch everybody. And um, I think the Dodgers will find that their collection of all-stars don't fit together all that well. But they'll, there's enough talent there that they're still going to make the playoffs. So <laughs> I think those two those two teams will, will still be in the playoffs. Um, that, I'll leave the NL Central for last. Yeah, the NL East, I think, uh, goes to the A's pretty pretty easily. And then the Phillies, I think, are definitely going to be in that. I'm not sure if that last wild card spot is going to come from the West or the East, but it could either be the Mets or it could be – it won't be the Marlins. They took a step back. I'm sorry. But <laughs> – the Mets or the Padres, I think, will probably battle it out for that last wild card spot. And the NL Central winner, I think, is going to be the Cubs. So yeah, and, and I we agree definitely on the Cubs. I'll leave the NL Central last for uh, for last as well. Um, it's very hard for me to bet against the Dodgers to win the NL West, especially just the age I am. I've rarely ever seen them win the division, and the only time recently that they did it. It took 107 wins to do it from the, uh, the giants that year. This is going to get interesting here in a minute, folks, because I'm just going to go by division winners first. I think it's just going to be Dodgers brace Cubs. I think that's just what it's going to be. The Cubs really didn't get any worse. I, I don't, I don't want to say they got any better, but they didn't really get any worse. But the addition of Craig council, I think changes a lot of the dynamic that Chicago has going on over there. And I just think that of the other four teams, could have done more, but and the Pirates included, but they just decided not to, or injuries are just absolutely brutalizing them right now. So you are I'm penciling in Dodgers, Braves, Cubs pretty easily. I agree with you as well. I think the Phillies, they're gonna have like a 90 something win season again and still be like eight games back of the Braves to win the division. It's just how it is in the NL East. I will not have another playoff team from the NL East. I think, like you mentioned, the Marlins didn't do anything, the Mets. That rotation scares the living daylights out of me in New York. Um, and Washington is just still pretty far away. As well, as far as the NL West goes, I think it's interesting because the Padres are a team that could easily win 86 games, and they're a team that could easily win 76 games, in my opinion. The Diamondbacks obviously had that crazy postseason run last year, get to the World Series, 
They add the likes of Eduardo Rodriguez to the rotation. They add a lot of other guys. And I believe that Erod might actually be out for quite a bit on the IL. I still have the Diamondbacks getting in there. I, I think that they're going to be the second wild card team. And then the third wild card team is where it gets interesting because you guys may have noticed that Gary is penciling in the Giants as winning the division. I penciled in the Giants as being in deep in a wild card race with a lot of different teams. I'm going to mention Cincinnati. I'm going to mention San Francisco, <laughs> even the Mets and the Padres and a lot of these other teams could be involved in this in St. Louis. You don't want to count them out either. Something tells me that for some reason, this Pirates team is going to find a way to sneak in and back into that final wild card spot. And when I was doing it, I had the, I thought I initially had them missing by a game. And then I realized, Oh, I have them at this record that I'll talk about later. Um, on a like one of my other prediction shows where I had them winning the tiebreaker over the Giants to get into the postseason, which ironically I think would be great because if that set it up, I think the Cubs would be the third division winner, meaning we would get a Cubs Pirates wild card series. And I just think that would be absolutely phenomenal. Um, so yeah, if I need to, as Stephen A would say, if I need to stay off the weed, just let me know, Gary. But I think the Pirates could back into that spot. I think they'll be in the conversation. I, I mean, I think. When I talk about like who's going to win the Central, I the way I have it mapped out in my head, I think the top four teams in the NL Central are separated by no more than six to eight games from mm -hmm. top to bottom. So, and I personally have the Cardinals finishing dead last. You know, so I I think uh, I think they'll be in the conversation. I think that's the the real takeaway for me this year. Is I think. The, the Pirates will be playing meaningful baseball games within the NL Central pretty much all season. Yeah, and I do think it's very – I haven't really looked at the schedule again, and this is a topic for a whole other show, but I don't think they play an NL Central team all that early either this year. I think it takes like the first couple weeks before they play an NL Central team, and I know they don't play the Reds for a very long time. I don't think they play Cincinnati until like – the first week of June or something like that before like we even see that team. But it's what happens when you play all 30 teams. So those are our playoff teams. Who's going to be our biggest surprise team, our biggest letdown team and our world series predictions. We'll get into those in just a minute. But before we do that, we're going to talk about Amazon fire TV. Already got a mention of them earlier, by the way, uh, Amazon fire TV, because you could see locked on sports today and it is your sports destination at Amazon Fire TV channel. So visit Amazon.com slash Fire TV or Locked On. Wait, yeah, there we go. Amazon.com slash Locked On Fire TV because it is your destination for sports from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. Not to mention, you also get great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos, and more. So check out Fire TV channels where you can even see me on your television if you want to on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit Amazon.com slash Locked On Fire TV, your sports destination. <coughs> All righty, and we are here for the final segment, kicking off the uh, preview and prediction shows that we're going to have on the podcast this week. We're going to have one more or two more coming at you Tuesday and Wednesday on Thursday. I keep saying you guys are getting two shows. Who knows? You might get more. You're going to have one in the morning previewing opening day. We're going to have one right after the game. It's going to be a very fun day, obviously playing the Miami Marlins at 410 Eastern time which I do kind of wish the game was a little earlier in the day. I like when it's a little earlier in the day, but it's just a personal preference. So we already talked about our postseason teams and what we think there. Who do you think the biggest surprise team across baseball is going to be this year? A lot of people have said it would have been the Reds last year. Who do you think it'll be this year as a team that'll kind of just pop out of nowhere and shock some people? I think because nobody expects it no matter what. The Pirates. I think they're going to surprise people this year. Um, I don't think there's a lot of people outside of this market that know what's coming necessarily outside of Paul Skeens and how this thing could look towards the end of the season. So 
I think they're probably going to be the ones that that people are looking on on Sports Center, going like, "How the hell did we lose to them?" You know, <laughs> I think I think the Pirates are going to be that team that kind of at least puts the league on notice that they're not the punching bag anymore. Yeah, and I obviously I the way I'm speaking on it with them making the postseason as the final wild card. Yeah, that would be a big surprise. I think a team to just name a team other than Pittsburgh that I think is going to surprise a lot of people because much like the pirates, I think it would just be unexpected is the tigers. I, we mentioned the AL central a lot and I said, the twins would win. You said the Royals would win, but I think much like you said with the NL central, those top three, top four teams could all be separated by six to eight games. And that tigers team, they're starting to find some real stuff. Riley green's a real player. Spencer Torkelson yeah. starting to figure it out a little bit. And I'm not saying that they're going to like surprise and win 90 games. I'm saying they could surprise and actually be a very competitive team in that division at something they haven't been able to do in a while. And even outside in the national league, I don't think the nationals are going to be as much of a pushover as some people think they are. (laughs) I mean, the national, I'm not saying they're going to be a great baseball team by any means, but folks, when you see the nationals on the schedule, don't just pencil it in as wins. I really don't think that's just going to be games that you can look at and say, oh, yeah, this is a team that we're just going to roll over. I think C.J. Abrams is finally going to take that step that they're expecting, hopefully, because I like the kid. I think he's a phenomenal baseball player. I think he has a lot of potential. But I think there's pieces in Washington, too, that they're kind of going to have to wait on for a while, but I don't think that they're going to be a massive pushover to the point where I'd even say they might not even finish last in that division, (laughs) in my opinion. you're, you're right. They might not. I would say like the best way to look at the national league this year is really like, look at a team like the the Colorado Rockies. They're going to finish dead last in the, in the NL West. No doubt. Like just look at the other teams in that division. Yeah. They're going to lose. But if you put them in the NL central, they'd be in the thick of it. Mm-hmm. I mean, like it, it's, it's very much so league dependent and division dependent as far as like who gets what and, and whatnot. But the Rockies are another team that really could kind of surprise some people, at least as far as like just being competent looking. Um, yeah. I wouldn't want to face them at home. I'll tell you that. No. I mean, real talent over there too. Ezekiel Tovar just got that big seven year extension. You got Nolan Jones. There's a lot of stuff going on. That's what's interesting about it is, I mean, I could see the Rockies, being last in the national league period and still having 68 to 69 wins and making this league really, really strong. As far as the biggest letdown team, Gary, who do you have as your biggest letdown this year? The Dodgers. Again, I, I, I think that the, the all-star team isn't going to come together the way they hope it will. I just, I just don't. They, Yamamoto is going to be really good. I really believe that. But I think it's going to take him a while to be really good. I think he's got some some work to do to to get to where he needs to be to be a good major league pitcher. You know the stuff's there. I just think there's a lot to learn yet. And Showy isn't Showy yet. I mean, he's going to hit, but mm-hmm. he's not doing dual duty. You know, he's not filling out that rotation for them. Um, Pirates have had a ton of injuries over the years, but the Dodgers have too. Get beat up a lot with, with their pitching staff, and a lot of what they've done is it's a razor's edge as to whether it's going to work out or not. I don't even think Gavin Lux is going to work out at shortstop for them. So they've got a lot of issues that that, that they're going to have to deal with, and we'll see how that team comes together. I, I personally think it looks a lot more like what the Padres have tried to do mm-hmm. than what the Dodgers need to do, and how the Dodgers have won traditionally. Yeah, and I think the Dodgers are like kind of a team where you look at Dave Roberts and people always joke that he's on the hot seat every year. I think it's the hottest the seat could ever be this year with Dave Roberts. I mean, you look at the team that is constructed on paper and you can make the argument, Gary, like you said, that it doesn't gel together. But, I mean, when you still are managing a team that has Freddie Freeman, Mookie Betts, and Shohei Otani on it, you're expected to not only win, but win it all. And that's usually the expectation they have. Um yeah. As far as my World Series prediction goes, to go to the Barry the lead here, my biggest letdown team is going to be the Braves. Um, The Braves are very interesting to me just because every year they have a phenomenal regular season. They did win the World Series a couple years ago. Yes, I know. 
but you look at all of the other times that they've gotten there and there's been one little team or a multitude of different reasons why they all of a sudden are just out of the postseason. And I, I really think this year you look at the team that they have again, it's a strong team. Some point, much like the Dodgers, the Braves and the Dodgers are very mono and mono on this. You have to win the world series or it's a bus season. I really just think that's how it is. And I think that they lose in the NLDS again. I, really I think do. the Braves, the Braves have an interesting thing because they do something that nobody else does in the whole league. They play their players almost every game. Oh yeah. Period. They don't play the rest game that everybody else does. You know how people get so frustrated. Why does Cabrian Hayes need a day off? He's twenty eight years old, right? Right. Yeah. Well, the Braves don't do that. The Braves play their starters every day. They swap their catcher. That's about it. Yeah. So they don't they don't play lefty righty. They don't play, you know, it's this is our lineup. This is our guys. Boom, 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 boom. It's what they do. This will be the third year in a row now where they get to the playoffs and lose if your prediction holds, right? Mm-hmm. At some point, don't you start to maybe ask, are my guys pooped and the other team yeah. has some energy left? It might force the Braves to think about changing some things. And it looks like they've tried to bring in a little bit more positional depth that could actually mm-hmm. compete for, for time. So uh, no more Guillermo Heredia. They, they've got some other some other options. And that might be kind of the beginnings of that thinking starting to take place where maybe we're killing ourselves in the regular season mm-hmm. for nothing. Well, yeah, and it's it's an interesting dynamic because you even look at the last couple of years just from what has happened in the World Series, which we'll get to your World Series prediction in a moment. Arizona snuck into the playoffs. Philly snuck into the playoffs. I mean, they were not teams that were winning 100 games that were going to the World Series. It was these teams that were competing down the stretch of the season that really at the end of the day snuck in there and all it takes is to get there. Um so, I mean, you can kind of guess already who one of my teams isn't, but what is your World Series prediction that you would put on video for everybody to listen to on this show, Gary? I would love to say Baltimore because I think it would be a good story. Um, but I, I ultimately think they're a team that's going to have to pay some kind of a price for being too young still. Yeah. Um, I think I'm going to go with... Uh, the Astros to find a way to to cobble together something and and make another run. They seem to know what they're doing once they get to the playoffs, and they just take it by the horns. So I'm going to go with the Astros in in the AL. In the NL, I think I'll go with the Braves. I think the Braves will get past Philly this year. Um, Philly has survived on some things that traditionally don't work in the playoffs to, to beat the Braves the last few years. So yeah, I think, uh, I don't know that I want to go into it thinking that that's going to repeat itself again. It could, but um, I think I'd probably go with the Braves this year. So we, we're very interesting here because when I was doing my whole setup for all of this, um, I have the Braves obviously losing to the Phillies in the NLDS again. I just think it's going to happen. Um, and Baltimore, you mentioned Baltimore and then you mentioned Houston, which I found very interesting because that ended up being my, um, my ALCS. And I was so torn when I was deciding on game seven, where it's like, it was in Baltimore because I had Baltimore being the number one seed. It really, to me in that game would all depend on who's pitching for Baltimore that day. Is it Corbin Burns? <laughs> I think is the biggest question. Is Corbin Burns pitching in the biggest moments for them? Because you mentioned the youth. I do think, though, that that team is going to find a way to push through. Obviously, I agree with you, too, that Houston is always going to be a team that can try to find a way. Texas, I just don't think they're repeating. I know they added Wyatt Langford. That pitching staff, just no. <laughs> that pitching, their offense is great, but they're going to be winning games like nine to eight on a daily basis. I think with that pitching staff and that bullpen that they have, I have Baltimore versus Philly. Um, as far as a winner goes, I don't ever really like predicting the winner all that much, especially in a set amount of games, but I did have Baltimore beating Philadelphia in the playoffs, which I think would just be such a fun series with Bryce Harper versus all those youth, uh, youthful guys in Baltimore. I mean, you'd have, 
that pitching staff against that Baltimore offense, I think would be very fun. Aaron Nolan, Zach Wheeler, those guys having fun over there. So yeah, I mean, the predictions are always fun and me and Gary are probably going to look back on these six months from now and be like, why did we ever think that, why did we ever think that the Dodgers weren't going to work? Or why did I ever think that Atlanta was going to win the NL East because Philly's up on them by like 15 games? Like predictions are always fun though, because you can look back on these and be like, okay, we got some things right. We got some things wrong. Yeah. I I don't care about being wrong. I I gave up that ghost five years ago when I started doing this stuff. Because you're going to be wrong. When you start doing March Madness brackets every year, you just kind of get used to being wrong. And then it just teeters to all your other sports predictions as well. Um, That's what happens when you don't bet on Oakland to beat Kentucky, uh, apparently. But that's where we leave it today, folks. Thank you so much for tuning into the first of three prediction and preview shows here on the Locked On Pirates podcast. As mentioned, you'll have two more coming your way tomorrow. We'll be looking at the opening day roster, making some predictions about that, as well as call-ups throughout the year. Wednesday, probably going to have another one of these where I do an MLB-wide one, but just a little bit different. Probably more on the betting side of things, like some of the bets that you guys should bet, over-unders for the Pirates, etc. Gary, of course, you're going to have five thoughts at five today, and then Pirates Fan Forum on Thursday still. Yeah, Thursday at nine, we're gonna do. Uh, we're gonna we want to give everybody time to watch that opening day. So we're gonna do Thursday at nine. Our buddy James Littleton will be on with us and uh, be talking about the beginning of the season. And then on Steel City Pirates, I'll have a season preview out probably Tuesday or Wednesday. Yeah, so things are ramping up, folks. We're back to baseball. Baseball starts again this Thursday, March twenty eighth, against the Miami Marlins. I. Do we have one more spring training game? Is there a game today? Today, yeah. And it's the today last one, right? Yep. Cool. Awesome. So we have one more spring training game. We'll even probably take a look at some of the spring training stuff that's happened. But, folks, thank you so much for tuning in. Have a wonderful rest of your Monday. And until then, see you on the flip side.